I just, I just had a dream that I was going to change my life, and I wasn't sure how it was going to all work out. But ten years into my, into my freedom and change, I had started my own business. But I, I was coming to church, and just God started working in me about possibly going back into the prison system and looking for men like me. And I thought of building an organization because I just figured that's what I needed in order to go into a prison. So the idea of choose to change came because in my mind and everything that I had learned in the last 15 years prior, in prison and out of prison, uh, is that life change was a choice. Um, even back in those days, he was talking about wanting to change men's life, wanting to change lives of people. Uh, half of what he said I thought was crazy at the time. Uh, however, and to, to see all these years later, to see his dream come to fruition and see the lives that, it, that are changed makes me realize maybe he wasn't so crazy after all. For some of us, this is the last chance before the system throws away the key on us and locks us for forever. And this is, this is my last chance. There's no other place that I, I wanted to be because I know, I know that the way I was uh, living, it only takes to prison, it only takes you to, to a hospital, it only takes you to the grave. There's life and there's death. There's right and there's wrong. And I knew that you had to choose. And uh, in my experience in the rehabs, in my experience with AA, taught me that choice was the key in everything I've ever read and researched to the pivoting point to life change. And so Choose to Change was born. It wasn't just an idea in my head. We go to my mom's every Sunday after church. And I remember telling my family, I want to go into the prisons. I just, and that's how it started. And then I said, well, we have to, I have to learn to be a speaker. They said, well, why don't you start here? So I sat at the, at the head of the table and they said, just tell us something. <laughs> so, so I said, okay. So every Sunday I, I came with a five minute little speech about life change and, and I started speaking in front of them. But the seed to wanting to be a speaker was planted the first time I went to prison which was, I was 18, 19 years old. But I remember they took us to this gym to see this speaker. And at the time, I, you know, I didn't know what was going on. Well, I went to hear the speaker and this guy started speaking about, he came to Houston, Texas uh, with $500 in his pocket. He started selling mattresses on the side of the road in Houston, Texas. And it's like, okay. Well, it turned out to be Mattress Mac. <laughs> Beautiful bedroom furniture at reasonable prices. You looked all over Houston. I didn't know him at the time, but it was years later that, Patrick, wait a minute, I know this guy. Gallery furniture will save you money. Gallery saves you money. And, uh, and I remember that was the first time, I was like maybe 19 years old in prison. I mean, I didn't was thinking about anything changing. I just, just heard this story. And, but the seed was planted that you could change your life. And not only change your life, but be successful. And I think that just stayed in my heart because I got out of prison at the age of 24 and became a drug addict. <laughs> I didn't become a successful entrepreneur back then. My name is Tim Brown. I'm the owner of Brown Family Funeral Home and Rick Brown Family Funeral Homes. Uh, we've been in business for, for 25 years here in the Rio Grande Valley. When I first met Orlando, he asked me if I'd go eat lunch with him. And I can remember sitting there and Orlando's across the booth from me and he's, he's telling me his dream and, and he tells me his testimony. And first of all, he tells his testimony and me growing up the way I grew up and Orlando growing up the way he grew up, those are two different, two different scenarios. And so I can remember thinking there, how in the world do I get out of here? But, you know, even at that time, he was so driven on I have something to offer people that want to change their lives. So then when I went to prison the second time that I really wanted to change my life and started seeking answers is when I remembered, I said, wow, imagine if I could be like Mattress Mac from nothing, getting out of prison and becoming successful. Man, that would be a powerful story. So what happened when I went back to prison, my mission was to figure out why. Why couldn't I change my life? 
why did I have God in my heart, but yet I couldn't change my life. I found answers in reading and I picked up a, a book on personal development. I had never heard those words before, personal development. It had to do with personal growth, leadership, and me actually changing. <laughs> that had never occurred to me that if life was gonna change, that I had to change. When I got out of prison, I continued my education and I knew or believed that if I continued this education, that somehow I would overcome. And sure enough, I did. So by the time Choose the Change started coming into the picture, I was being successful in my business. I had paid off my house. And in my mind, it was like, okay, it's time to go back in. It's time to do something. And Choose the Change started to grow. When I went and took my training to become a volunteer with the state of Texas, I found out that I could also go into the prison, not only the parole office. I thought, you know what, I'll start a prison ministry. So I went to pastor and told him, hey, pastor, I want to start a prison ministry. And he kind of looked at me and said, go ahead, try it out, see what happens. Uh, I started going into a prison as well, not only the parole office. And in the prison, it was, well, they're not coming to church, right? But at least I'd tell them about the church and what I do. And then at the parole office, I'd invite them to our church. I am um, Hector Garza, I'm 47 years old, and I'm a member of a Choose to Change Foundation, recovered drug addict and alcoholic, and this is my testimony. I started using drugs at the early age, 13, 14 years old. Uh, I, never, I never thought I was gonna become an addict. It started like a game and became an addiction. Uh, and I, I brought all that addiction over to the United States and, and I started doing the same thing. I started getting in trouble with the law until there was a day that uh, there was no more probation and it was time to go to prison. This last incarceration, I got shot by the McAllen Police Department. I was shot in the chest and under my arm. I went to the hospital after that. They took me to jail, went to prison again. And that's when I realized that I needed to change my whole life because I thought I was capable to do both things, provide for a family, but I wasn't, I wasn't even able to control myself. And that's why I ended up in jail so many times. And um, being, being in prison, I made a decision. I made a decision to change my life, to change. No matter who you talk to, when it comes to rehab and rehabilitation or prison, what really matters is when you get out. So I wanted to catch people right there once they were out, which is why Choose the Change exists, to fill that gap because that's where people are failing the most. So I went to my pastor and asked him if I could start some kind of program. I actually thought he was going to say no. <laughs> so, so. I didn't think too far, too, too far ahead on that. So when he said yes, I was like, okay, so let me try this out. Now what, I, what do I do now? I decided, well, I'll just start a mentoring class. Just start helping people coming out of prison to kind of re-enter into society, which is what we have today, right? A re-entry program. And I started teaching things that I had learned throughout the years about, about personal development and personal change. Uh, the first week I got released from prison, I went to parole office to report and I saw a flyer from the church and from Choose to Change and I thought uh, that's, that's the first thing I got to do to stay away from old friends and from old places and, and from old habits, you know, that I need to get involved and in doing something that is going to lead me some other way than the one I was uh, used to follow all the time. And it was the only one. That was the only brochure like it was meant for me. And so I, I took it and I started coming. I got released on Tuesday and on Thursday I was coming to the classes. People started coming to my mentoring class. And so what I was doing, I was actually training myself to be a speaker. So I listened to a lot of speakers, all these principles that I was learning. I was felt like, wait a minute, <laughs> these guys, this is biblical but I had never understood it that way. So when I started learning that these principles were spiritual, I started putting them together from a biblical perspective and I started teaching it. And this is what we have today. I did classes AA, NA. I, I did it all. I went to psychiatric hospitals, personal counseling and all those things and nothing worked for me. I didn't wanna be surrounded by, by people that go 
uh, day by day. One of the, the motives that AANA has is just, just for today. I didn't want to live for just for today. The Bible says that if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. You know, why am I going to continue believing that I'm an addict? I don't need to believe those things. I don't want to believe those things. I want, I want something with much substance, like I said. I want something that, that helps me change my life. And I know it hasn't been easy. Orlando helping us with these classes and not just that. Uh, uh, Orlando has found some jobs for some other people. That, that alone is, is just a blessing, man, for someone just released from prison that has nothing, having a job the next day. That's, that's, that's something that non, nobody does. Nobody does that. All too often when you talk to an ex-convict, they left Jesus in prison. They left the skills that they learned in prison because when they get into the real world, they have no help. And so because of the struggles that come, they revert to what they know. And, and they haven't learned anything to, to get them to be the man of character that they need to be. They haven't learned anything to, to teach them how to be a husband, how to be a father. Well, that's what Orlando's program with the Choose to Change does differently, is that it catches them even outside of prison. When they come through the parole office, Orlando catches them there. He has a class for them. They come and they learn not only what they learn in prison, but now they're learning real world experiences. Orlando's phone is available to them. If they're struggling, I don't care if it's the middle of the night, he answers the phone and walks them through it. And so, you know, that's the big difference between a typical prison ministry and what Orlando does. The added benefit of having the parole office, the parole ministry, Orlando is helping them change their life in the real world, not in an environment where they're there and they're not having to deal with their family, they're not having to deal with their kids, they're not having to deal with their finances. He's dealing with them when all of life's pressures is pushing on them. As the years have gone by, I can see the fruit. Several men that, that have gone on from Dallas and Houston and Corpus Christi, where I started going into the churches and to the prison units in their areas. They started a Choose a Change little branch over there in Austin, Texas, in Temple, Texas. And the seeds are being planted. People are starting to realize and know what we do and how critical it is. Because every one of us knows uh, uh, someone that's struggling with drugs and alcohol that's coming out of prison, that needs some mentoring. Uh, no, I can't help everybody, but at least there's a path. There's a pathway to success. There's a pathway to change. Today, if you choose to, you can change your life forever. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the dark. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear few people that have a dream like he had and and that's all that consumes them every conversation was about this dream I'm going to do something that's going to change the lives of people and every conversation revolved around 
I'm looking for people that want to change their lives. And sometimes you thought, okay, man, this is, this is a little overboard. But to see him find the people that want to change their lives, to facilitate that, to give them the tools, you realize his dream has come true. Going to prison, you know, giving your testimony like Orlando does. Nobody does that, man. We need more people like him go and reach out for people that they're hopeless, you know. Once you go, once you go to prison, there's, there is no help, there's uh, nobody. And, and having somebody like Orlando telling you, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's another chance, you know, there is a God, there is an opportunity that you can take. I have done it, look at me. If I did it, you can do it too. And there's sometimes we need, we need that, that kind of people to hear those kind of things. Orlando's doing it, and, and I don't believe anybody else is doing it like, or, like he is. I don't know anybody, and I've been around for a long time, and I've been trying to get out of these uh, addictions and, and, and selfish way of live for a long time. And I found it here, I found it here. I believe I found something uh, good and choose to change. Choose to change is having an impact on the community. You know, all I can tell you is that the city of Alton wouldn't have a church that is there without Choose to Change. The city of Blue Rock, Illinois wouldn't have a church that's there without Choose to Change. There's a glass company in town that wouldn't have the best maintenance man without Choose to Change. And the stories go on and on and on. When you change one person in that family, who's the leader of that family, who happens to be the man of that family, he's going to change that family. That family possibly could change this community. You know, the old saying, I know it sounds cliche, but it only takes a spark to get a fire going, it's true. And that's what we're doing through Choose to Change is we're starting that fire with just a spark. The Choose to Change ministry is growing and it's bigger than me now. You and the volunteers and the board members that have done so much just to put this event together. I mean, this is our second annual event and, and, and I couldn't have done it myself. You know, and thanks to the sponsors that we have now, they believe in what we're doing. And I believe that, that God is going to continue bringing supporters to our little dream of just restoring families, fighting fatherlessness, drug addiction, and family violence. We're doing it. We're making it happen. And, um, Thanks to our community and the many supporters, uh, I'm grateful. Thank you.